Hey everybody, this is Rustin with Metal Holic and the Examiner with us today all the way over in Europe, Sweden. We've got Thomas Olsen of Bloodbound. How are you doing, brother? Yeah, I'm doing good. Thanks for ha having me on your show. Absolutely. It's it's like yeah. beyond the witching hour here. It's like 4 a.m. I have no clue what time it is over there. I'm assuming sometime in the afternoon. So. <laughs> yeah, actually, it's noon now. It's noon. 12 o'clock. There you go. High noon, which is basically time to get out of bed for most rockers. So you're probably <laughs> exactly. you're probably trying to get enough caffeine into you to stay awake just like I am. So. <laughs> yeah. Now, you guys are becoming more and more prominent over in Europe, and you guys have been around since about 2004, but over here in the States, we're just now starting to get a taste of what you guys are all about. So for us, could you give us just a little backstory on the band? Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah me and Frederick for formed the band back in 2004, and, you know, we had been playing in, you know, different metal bands in the in the past together and we were kind of playing on and off and then uh, we decided to form like a classic classic metal band and we we started to write you know a few few songs for the first album Nosferatu and the songs came out really well but we didn't have a singer at that time so we contacted Urban Breed from from the band Tad Morales because he was a friend friend of ours from from before as well and we we sent him some some of the songs and he he liked the stuff and decided to 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 join us and record an Osrata album. That's basically how it started and we recorded the album and that album was released in early two thousand six and we got a great response for the album. So that that led to that we ha we had to put together a band because it was only the three of us in the beginning. Mm -hmm. Well, you guys have released two albums in the last couple of years, including the brand new one, which we'll talk about in a minute. But also on these, the most recent two albums, you've got a new vocalist in Patrick. How, how has it been now having having a new vocalist in the band? How, has it changed the dynamic at all for you guys in terms of the sound of the band or how you approach the songwriting for his voice or anything? We've had some problems in the past with singers, I would say, because when... You know, Urban decided to leave after the Nosferatu album, and you know we had uh, written all these songs for for our second album, Book of the Dead, and we didn't have a singer, so we looked around for for a new singer, but we couldn't really find found one find one in Sweden. So we contacted Michael Bormann from Germany, who's a kind of a professional session singer, and he's got his band Jaded Heart, and he's been in a lot of different projects. So we asked him to join us for the second album, Book of the Dead, and he, he sang on the album, but he couldn't really do all the live shows that, you know, for the upcoming tour, so we had to, to part with him as well, so we had a bit of trouble with singers, but now when Patrick joined the band, we feel like, you know, we've found our guy, so it's just the, the atmosphere in the band is a lot better now, and he's a really easygoing guy and easy to work with, so... All right, and now you guys recorded the new album in the name of metal, and you guys have actually, if I understand it correctly, you've had the album complete since way back in May. You sort of had to sit on it for six or seven months. That had to be tough. Yeah, that's you know I've I've listened to those songs for quite some time now, and it feels like they're old almost. The label wanted to wanted to wait with the release because you know uh, the Unholy Cross album came out I think around May or something uh, 2011. So they wanted a bit more time in between the albums. You guys have always had something of a power metal base, but on Unholy Cross, and especially on the new album, you really seem to be edging towards more of a traditional sound, like you were originally talking about that classic sound. Is that intentional, or just sort of where your creative juices have been taking you lately? I think it's, uh, you know, it is intentionally, I would say, because we wanted the you know, especially the last album to be more, you know, a bit more epic and, and, and classic sounding. Mm -hmm. It's kind of an extension of the first half of the Unholy Cross album. I think we, we move in that direction now and it feels like it's the right thing for the band. And, and now you and Frederick are the ones, not only who started it, but my understanding is you guys are the principal songwriters. Have you been working Patrick and the other guys into getting involved with the songwriting, or are you guys pretty contentious to be doing most of it yourselves? 
we we really want you know all of the all the band to be all of the guys in the band to be involved in the in the songwriting and Patrick has actually he's written lyrics and some melodies on the on the last track on the new album Bounded by Blood and he he, he wants to be involved in the songwriting it's just that you know he's kind of new in the band so I think he, he needs to find his place in the in kind of the style of what of what Bloodbound is about before he can be more involved. Right. But definitely we want you want want him to be more involved in the songwriting. So it's not just like we want to write all the stuff. Yeah, I think I saw an interview with him once somewhere that said uh, that you know you guys start writing the album and you guys are so quick with it before anybody even has a chance to come up with an idea. You guys have just banged it out. So. Yeah, <laughs> but, yeah, I, I read that too, but that's uh, not really the true. I would say because I usually, you know, when I write, I I've already started to write stuff for the for our next album, right. and I kind of. I write all the time and I stash ideas all, all the time. So when the time comes to record the album, it might seem that, you know, all the songs just pop out like that. But I really work on them for a long time. Right. And that's a nice segue because one of the things I was going to mention was, you know, there's, of course, there's always on your guys' albums, but I'm really on this album, there's some incredible guitar work. I love the, the various riffs and stuff. As a matter of fact, my favorite song this week seems to be Mr. Darkness, but, you know, who knows what it'll be next week. So. <laughs> but, All right. That's good. But, that's a good sign. Yeah. But metal has always been guitar and riff driven, and Bloodbound really seems to remember that its purpose is to sort of serve the almighty riff. Yeah, that's that's what I think as well. Like I'm I'm a big fan of, you know, bands like Accept that kind is kind of the you know, the textbook example of how to write good riffs, I think. So it's right. kind of a tradition that we try to stay in that kind of vein. And you guys have done a knockout job with that, especially on this new album. Now, you guys have made a video for the title track, but my understanding is it's your first video you guys have ever made? That can't be true. Yeah, it, it is true. It's, it's sad, but true. Yeah, we've had, we've, uh, we've been talking about, you know, videos for a long time, and we never got around to doing one. I think it's mainly because of, you know, financial. Right. Financials, because... You know, you need. We wanted to do a video that looked really good, and this time we got the chance to work with uh, Thomas Chadder, who's done videos for In Flames and all these great bands. So we thought it would was a great idea to do it now. In the past, we've had like we've had some offers from people who wanted to make videos, and but still on kind of a not professional level. So right. we decided to wait. Well, and this one sort of had sort of that classic theme, you know, that you, that I remember from the whole new wave of British heavy metal. And, you know, I loved it with the young kid putting on. And, of course, I grew up, my very first band that I truly fell in love with was Kiss. So when I saw him putting on that T-shirt and then his jacket and everything, I was just like, I, I love this. This is just so classic. And it's really bringing that back around. So you guys did. Now, so what was it like for you guys to actually make your first video? It was a great experience because, you know, we have a, a really cool set for the video and it's like an old uh, train station uh, warehouse. And we kind of went to our, what do you call it, like the commune, the, the city, mm -hmm. and asked them to, to if we could record a video at this location. And, yeah, they supported us and we built this kind of uh, urban environment inside this big warehouse and had a lot of fire and pyro and all that stuff. So it was fun to record the video. And, and uh, uh, the, the performance part was recorded here in uh, Bolna, Sweden, where where I live. And the, the sequence with the, the story kind of thing with a little guy with a Kiss t-shirt was recorded down south. And we, we were surprised as well when we saw it because we didn't we didn't know how that those scenes would turn out. So it was great to see him put on that kiss t shirt and <laughs> all that stuff. Because that's kind of the the vibe we wanted in the video as well. 
Well, you guys really hit it. Now, on every album, there's always interesting stories that go behind a lot of the songs. Um, and some of them, for you, for the writers and stuff, stand out more so than, than maybe some of the other ones. Do you have one or two songs on In the Name of Metal that really sort of have a, a more standout story, if you will, or more of a significance to you than some of the others, perhaps? Uh, yeah, I would say Metalheads Unite. That song was uh, um, me and Frederick. We were sitting at, at a friend's place, uh, our bus driver actually, his place, and we were drinking and we were listening to all these like corny old metal rock songs. And I can't remember exactly what song came up, but it was something like, you know, R O C K, something for rock. And uh-huh. Really corny chorus. And. I was telling Frederick that, you know, we should do a song with M-E-T-A-L, you know, <laughs> metal, in, in, and see see what happens. And we were laughing, and that was just a joke, really, that night. But the day after, when I woke up, I was really hangover, and I remembered that we were talking about that. And I started to try to work around that theme, and that's how the song came about. You know, that, and that brings us back to sort of that old school, that accept stuff, you know, that type of not just riff driven, but the, the anthemic sort of thing of, of, you know, bringing us all together and under the, the flag of metal, if you will. Do you remember going back as a teenager who, who was there sort of a moment for you, whether it was a song or a concert or something like that, where you were just like, this is what I want to do with my life? Uh, the first really like strong memory was, my my older brother he was uh, he was listening to all this metal before me and I was visiting him at his friend's place and he had bought this the, the number of the Beast album right and he was playing that song and that's I guess the strongest memory I have early memory I have because I really liked the sound of that song and the the opening riff you know that the voice in the beginning with that speech and, and all that stuff. Right. So that that was a pretty cool experience. But I think it was when I saw I went to I uh, saw uh, ACDC and Metallica at Monsters of Rock in Copenhagen mm-hmm. in ninety one. I was fifteen, sixteen, or something. And that was the moment when I felt that I, this is what I wanted to do. That was a great concert. It was the Razor's Edge? Metallica just released the Black Album. Yeah, that that was absolutely a a huge huge show because those were both huge tours for both bands. Yeah, that was you know all the twenty one cannons on stage. And it was raining dollar bills with Angus on them and all right. that stuff. It was absolutely cool during money talks, I remember that it was at that show, not in Copenhagen, but on that tour. Guitar wise, were there one or two guitarists that in particular influenced sort of your style? When I started, it was. You know, I tried to copy because I play. I, I played a lot of, you know, like Metallica and played all the Metallica songs and Maiden songs. So naturally, it was kind of I was trying to play like Kirk Hammett and Dave Murray and those players. But eventually, I ended up, you know, listening to Ingrid Malmsteen and play you know, more like shredding stuff. I got into that a bit as well. So it's a lot of different players now, really. Right. Obviously, you can never go wrong with Ingve Malmsteen. Now, you guys get to to tour, you know, all over the place. Uh, doing all that touring stuff, aside from the actual part of being on stage in front of all the fans, which has got to be like a high, uh, you know, nobody can believe unless they've done it. What, what's your favorite thing about being out touring? Well, I would say it's it's kind of a being on a fun holiday, doing what you love. It has no downsides, really. It's just that. Of course, you have to be away from home and you miss family and stuff. But you know, it's it's great to be on tour and and especially like you said, we we play a lot in Eastern Europe and there's a lot of great fans out there that you know treat you really well and it, it's a lot of fun. I know it's really hard, especially for you know, unless you're really established, like a, you know, big bands like Creator and Accept and some of those bands. It's hard these days to come over to America because apparently we make it non-cost effective, if you will. But and I'm assuming, like most bands these days, you've also probably got a day job and everything else. But is there a chance of seeing you over in America at some point? 
Well, at the moment, we don't have any plans for, for the U.S. And I get that, that's the re- because of the reasons that you said as well, because it, it cost, costs a lot of money to, to get over to the U.S. Right. You know, the, the plane tickets and all that stuff, and you need, need quite a lot of money to be able to do a tour. And basically, the, the, two, the last two albums that we've done on AFM, in the, uh, in the past, we haven't released. The album wasn't released in, in the U.S. I think only the In the Name of Metal was released in the U.S., Right, I've always I've always gotten it through Europe, so this is that's why I was saying it's sort of like this is the first time um, uh, the American audience is really getting a taste of you guys. Um, yeah. So before we get out of here, a couple of questions just for fun. Um, one of them being being out on tour and it's always an experience, like you said. Is, is there one memory that really stands out for you being on tour that was sort of like that uh, you know that oh my god moment or you know something really unusual happened or anything? Yeah, uh, I guess I think the best one of the best moments we had on tour was you know we went on tour with Hammerfall and Sabaton in right. 2009 and we we shared the bus with Sabaton. That was a really fun tour, especially when you know, we were traveling around all these countries in Eastern Europe and the shows were uh, sold out basically everywhere. And the show in in Sofia, Bulgaria was was excellent. It was one of one of the best shows we've done, I think. Nice. And it's almost the end of the year, and so that means all the year end lists are coming out. Is there an album that came out in two thousand twelve that's sort of I guess your favorite album of the year, if you will, one that's just sort of been kicking your ass constantly? To be honest, I haven't really heard any album this year that I thought was, you know, excellent or gave me an aha. Nothing yeah. really, sh- nothing really shook you this year, huh? <laughs> no, and, and I think that's because you know I've been writing, we've been writing for the new album, and I haven't really listened to many new albums lately. Right. It's kind of sad, but. <laughs> well, and that's that's the hard part when you when you write and perform music, you know, listening to too much other music sort of tends to dilute what you do. So I know a lot of musicians sort of shut themselves off when they're. No, um, I would say the the Within Temptation album I really like. Right. That was a good album, really well produced and good songs. Absolutely. So then, tell us something about you that that uh, is maybe unusual, whether it's a hobby, an interest that you have, things that you're into outside of music that might surprise people. I have a, a daytime job because we don't sell enough albums. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm I'm a computer programmer, so that's basically what I what I do during the days. And I have my own business, which is good because I can, you know, I'm my own boss, so I can write music whenever I feel like it. Really, right? It's nice to be able and, to uh, to say, "Hey, boss, uh, I'm going to go work on some music right now." That's fine. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, you, you never know when you when you get the inspiration to to write. Absolutely. But I mean, if you're sitting in front of a computer and doing some boring programming and you have your guitar next to you, it's really easy to pick up the guitar because that's you know, more fun, of course. Of course. And of course, because you're the boss, you can uh, take time off to go tour. So. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Thomas Olsen of Bloodbound, the new album In the Name of Metal, out now. Finally, we get one released here in America, too. But you can get all their stuff. I mean, it's it's the Internet. It can be found on the Internet. So, But make sure you buy it, support the band. Thanks so much for taking the time to talk with us today. And uh, hopefully at some point we'll get a chance to see you over here in America. But, uh, you know, if not, perhaps all things being good, you might get a chance to do a second video. Only this time it'll be an entire DVD, and we'll be able to catch you live that way. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, it would be great to come over to the U.S. and play. Absolutely. Thomas, again, thank you so much for taking the time. Great new album, and we look forward to talking with you soon.